Welcome to today's video where I am going to compare the four power banks that I typically use on one of my Disney trips. And I use these mostly for charging my DJI Osmo Pocket 3 that I use to record all of my content. I'm using it right now because it makes a great overhead filming rig. That's why you don't see it in the frame. And based on the kind of trip I go on, my charging needs might be different. The DJI Osmo doesn't have a very large battery, and so if I'm in the park all day, it is definitely not going to make it all the way to the end of the day with the charge that it has. And so at some point, I am going to need to recharge it. And which of these devices I use is going to depend on how much space I'm willing to devote to charging, how many times I need to charge devices, how many devices I need to charge, how fast I need to charge those devices. A lot of those things weigh in. So today I'm gonna do a simple speed test on each of these, and we're gonna talk about which ones charge fastest and whether that's enough to outweigh other features that they have. We're gonna talk about different charging scenarios. So if you're into charging and numbers and stats, this is gonna be awesome. The first one we're going to test is the battery handle that comes with the creator kit. So I'm going to plug this in and start my stopwatch. After you plug this in, you're going to see in a moment the screen's going to change. On the top, it'll show you the battery percentage remaining in the DJI. And in the bottom, it'll show you the battery percentage left in the handle. And now it's been 32 minutes and we finally have charged our battery from 20% all the way up to 80% with the DJI battery handle. And if you're interested, it only took an extra two minutes to drain the battery handle completely down to 0%, and that only gave us an extra 1% of charge. So basically, you've got 32, 33 minutes of charging time in the battery handle. That's all it's capable of. The next one I'm going to be testing is the A-Logic 4-in-1 travel charger. This has uh, a charging pad for a smartphone. It'll also charge a smartwatch, and it has two USB outputs as a power bank. You can output USB-C and you can output USB-A. When you output under the USB-C output, like I'm doing now, this is capable of pushing out enough voltage to trigger the fast charging feature on the DJI. And you're going to see that when the DJI reaches 20%, it's going to switch to fast charging. You can see it now it says fast charging on the screen. As we approach 80% charge. There we are. 22 minutes and 48 seconds. Let's round that up to 23 minutes. Significantly faster than the DJR charging handle. And you can see on this one, we've only used about 50% of the capacity on this A-Logic 4-in-1 charger. The next one I'm going to be testing is the Anker 733 charger. This is another 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. As you can see, it is fast charge capable out of the two USB-C outlets. It also has a USB-A outlet, and this one on the other side has prongs that fold out. It can plug directly into the wall, so you don't need to bring a separate uh, wall plug. Very convenient. With the Anker 733 charging to 80% only took 16 minutes. This is the fastest unit that we've been testing so far, and when we look at the indicator dots on the Anker, we can see it's still showing all four dots, so plenty of capacity left over. I forgot to record the first part of this test where I plugged the fuel rod in and started the stopwatch when the DJI had 20% battery. It looks the same as all the other ones, and you can see here it took 47 minutes for the fuel rod to push the DJI up to 80% battery. And pushing the DJI from 20% to 80% used three of the four dots available on the fuel rod. Okay, so here are the four items that we have tested today. I'm going to put their particulars up on the screen now. First, we have the DJI battery handle that comes with the creator kit. It retails for $69.99 if you were to buy it by itself. It weighs 2.3 ounces or 65 grams, has a capacity of 950 milliamp hours, and it has a charge time of 32 minutes to take the Osmo Pocket 3 from 20% to 80%. Next, we have the A-Logic Lift 4-in-1. This retails for $99.99, weighs 8.05 ounces or 228 grams, has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery capacity, and charges the Osmo Pocket 3 in 23 minutes. 
The next one here is the Anchor 733. This retails for $79.99, weighs 11.35 ounces or 322 grams, has a capacity of 10,000 milliamp hours, and it will charge the Osmo Pocket 3 in 16 minutes. And last over here is the Fuel Rod. This retail for $38. It weighs 2.55 ounces by itself or 71 grams, has a capacity of 3,200 milliamp hours, and it takes 47 minutes to charge the Osmo Pocket 3. So if we are just going by speed, the winner, hands down, is the Anchor 733 with a time of 16 minutes. That is seven minutes faster than the next fastest one, and that is three times faster than the fuel rod. So if you're just looking for speed of these four options, this is the one to get. But it might not be that simple. Let's take a closer look at each of these and a few of their pros and cons and some of their... Uh, their efficiency stats. Let's start by taking a deeper dive into the Anchor 733. So one of the things I like about this is it has a fold out set of prongs so that I can plug this directly into the wall and charge it. And while it is charging, I can also output two USB C's and a USB A. So it does a lot of things. Um, this is great in airports if I want to top up all my devices on layovers and it has enough juice to keep my iPad charged for a long flight if I want to watch movies for seven or eight hours. This is fantastic, but it is the largest and heaviest of the options and it is the second most expensive. So next let's take a look at the A-Logic Lift 4-in-1. This is smaller and lighter than the anchor. It's about the same, actually it's about the same size, a little thinner, but it does weigh a few ounces less. You get a few things extra. You have wireless charging. I can just put my phone or my AirPods right here and charge. I can also charge my Apple Watch. It has a fold out stand, so like it can stand and work like a bedside charger. And then it has two outputs, whereas the A Logic, or whereas the Anchor had three. Same posted 10,000 milliamp hour capacity between the two of these, but there is a seven minute difference in their charging speed. This is about seven minutes slower to take the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 up to 80% but they're both capable of fast charging. This one is just faster charging. The next one is the DJI charging handle. This is the lightest of the options. It also has the lowest battery capacity. It barely has enough juice to get the Osmo Pocket 3 from 20% to 80% and then it dies. It does have a little uh, quarter 20 on the bottom. So while you have this plugged into the camera, you can continue to use other accessories with the DJI, like a tripod or some other kind of mounting option. So that's kind of nice. It does give you the fast charging. It charges relatively quickly at 32 minutes, given its size and the fact that it completely exhausts itself. That's pretty good. My problem with this is that you only get that one charge. So if you're carrying this in your bag with you after you've plugged it in and gotten that boost, this is now just dead space and dead weight in your bag until you can find a place to charge it up because it has its own USB-C and you can recharge this if you have another one of these power banks. But then it's just getting silly. I'm carrying two power banks to charge one. So this, I only bring this if I know I'm going to be shooting for a short amount of time and I might need a little charge, but I'm not going to need a lot. I would not bring this if I was going to be shooting all day in the park. And then the last one is the fuel rod. So the fuel rod is the second lightest. It is the cheapest by about half. It costs $38. The next cheapest one, the DJI, costs $69. It's the slowest by a significant margin. It takes three times longer to charge the Osmo to 80% than the fastest one, but look at the size difference and look at the cost difference. And the advantage to this 
It's very small. So if you're the type of person who will plug this into the DJI and toss it in your bag and walk around for 10 or 20 minutes while it does its thing and gives you a boost, that's going to be just fine. And then when this is empty, you can just toss it into the machine, get a new fresh one out for free when you visit the fuel rod machine, and then you can charge again and again and again. So it's slow, but I think that is compensated for by its small size and its re swap ability. So now you've seen the charging times, you've seen the prices, the weights, the battery capacities, we've seen some pros and cons and features of each one. So now which one do I use the most often? The most often I actually use the fuel rod mostly because it is very small and very compact and I can swap it out over and over and over again. So I don't need to bring a larger, heavier charger and take up more space in my bag. I will usually bring the fuel rod because that swappable convenience is the one feature that really has won me over on these last few trips. If you need more speed, if you are really filming a lot or you are using a very power hungry device and that long charge time is not enough for you, I think the next best option in terms of cost, size, weight, efficiency, and multifunctionality, it's going to be the A-Logic Lift because I can attach my phone to this and charge my phone and plug a USB or two into it and charge four devices at once. I could charge my phone, my watch, my camera, and something else, maybe my magic band, all at once. And this is not that heavy. So when you consider all the things it does for its size and weight and price, and it has fast charging if you need to boost your DJI very, very quickly, this is my second option. And then the third option would be this, if I'm just gonna pop into the park for a few hours, I wanna record some content, and I wanna just have a little bit of insurance to give myself a little bit of a boost, I might carry this, but since I've gotten the fuel rod, I don't use this that often. And then this, I almost never use anymore because it's just so heavy, and very rarely in the park am I going to need to find an outlet and actually plug this in and, pl and charge multiple devices. But if you are traveling with a family and you all are going to sit down at your lunch break, find an AC outlet, and everyone can plug their phone or their device in and everyone in your group can get a charge, this might be an option for families or groups. But if you are traveling solo, like I usually am on my content creation trips, Compact option, slightly more robust option. Well, I think that's going to do it for this particular video. Um, this one's kind of boring, just a talking hands and voice video, um, which might be a nice break for those of you who don't like to look at my face. But uh, I hope this gives you an idea of some options that might be available to you if you need a way of keeping your devices charged when you're out and about in Disney parks sp specifically or really anywhere. Well, thank you all for watching. Hope you learned something and I will see you in the next video.